See yourself the way that God sees you. Believe in yourself the way that God believes in you. Say about yourself what God says about you. Your real identity, your true self is found in Jesus. Welcome to another episode of Experience More. I'm Pastor Frank Montgomery, and I'm believing God is going to speak to you today in the name of Jesus. Today, I want to talk to you about seeing yourself the way God sees you, uh, saying about yourself what God says about you, finding and building your identity in Christ. You know, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And as we see ourselves the way God sees us, as we believe in ourselves the way God believes in us, as we understand what God's word says, and we begin to say that and think that and believe that in our hearts, man, we are on the path to, to fulfilling and, and uh, finding and following after God's plan and purposes for our life. Well, when we don't, uh, when we don't see that way, uh, we're going to miss out. We're going to get distracted. And the devil intends that. Satan is out to steal, kill, and destroy. In fact, Paul writes to the church in Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he says, the God of this world, or Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelieving to prevent, prevent them from seeing uh, the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, which is the image of God. God has an image for you, a self-image that he has projected on you, that he has planned for you. He has a design for you. And so many of us, we miss it. We don't pay attention to it. And that's because we have a thief. Uh, an enemy. Uh, and I'm here to say, we do not have to be victims of identity theft. Oh, he's trying. He's trying to blind our, our eyes. He's trying to steal from us. He's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But come on, we win. We are victorious as long as we are in Jesus. As long as we are studying his word and seeing what his word says about us. As long as we are around the body of Christ. Uh, it, it takes an, it takes energy. It takes effort. But when we're praying to God and, and having a communion and a fellowship and, and a, a relationship and, uh, dare I say, an experience with the Holy Spirit, man, it, it, it just changes. And we, we, we have this illuminating light in our lives. But boy, when we don't, when we are distracted with the cares of this world, when we allow culture or our own selfishness to, to distract us or hinder us, boy, it, it really creates problems in our life. You know, Jesus said it this way. He, he tells us a, a story, a metaphor, if you will, in Matthew chapter 6. He says this in verse 22. He says, your eye, your eye is like it isn't a lamp, but it's like a lamp that provides light for your whole body or your whole world or your whole life. Your, like, your, your eye is like a lamp. Uh, and when your eye is healthy, when what you see is good, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, then your whole body is filled with darkness. In other words, when what you're looking at, when how you see yourself is darkness, when all you're doing is paying attention to, I don't know, politics or Hollywood's culture or the music culture or, you know, what the world would tell you to look at or when you're comparing and competing against the world's measurements of what you should look like and how you should dress or how smart you should be or how much money you should have. When, you, when you're distracted by those things, man, how dark your world will be. He goes on to say in verse 23, and if the light that you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. God's trying to get you to see with the light of the glorious gospel. Not just, you know, this is not a real, uh, this is a metaphor. It's not about looking at light. It's, uh, it's looking at his light. It's looking at his love. It's looking at his grace, his goodness, his mercy, being thankful for what he has provided, seeing his way and his path for our lives. 
when we do that, when we see that, when our our eyes are fixed on, on God's word, when our eyes are fixed on the Holy Spirit leading and directing our lives and providing comfort and peace in our lives, when our when our eyes are fixed on the things of God and the people of God, the community of faith around us, the church of Jesus Christ that the gates of hell will not prevail against, when our eyes are set on that, oh, our life is healthy and full of his light. But boy, when it's not, we can be so distracted. And again, you, you know, our eyes don't actually, it is, it, it, that is not the, that's not what we see. Our eyes are just a lens, but it's in our mind. So our eyes are the lens to our mind. Well, in the spiritual sense, the same way, what we're focused on is, an, is a lens uh, that sends a signal, an image into our hearts. So I'm praying out of your heart will, will flow rivers of living water. Uh, that out of your heart, the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak the goodness of God, the things of God. Uh, and the way that we see things is, is going to really determine our future. But oftentimes we don't realize, we don't pay attention to the darkness around us. We think, well, isn't this just normal? Uh, it, it, you know, my life's not as bad as some others. And we compare and compete and we've, we, we don't say, God, what's your plan for my life? What, what, are, what do you have in my life? And so we, we end up with a lot of people around us that uh, maybe you, even watching right now, or uh, find yourself depressed or weak or sick, broken, uh, angry, depressed, full of anxiety, loneliness. These are all symptoms of a, a, a broken soul, a weak self-image, uh, a, a low self-esteem uh, uh, going on in your heart and in your mind. And it's not, it's not the image that God has for you. Uh, so, so today, I, I, I want to give us some what I call statements of faith to help us build our image, build our mindset, build a, a, an identity in Jesus. And so when the negative things come in our life that just want to overwhelm us or distract us or we're temptations that we have that try to lead us away. And, you know, it, it's, it's almost like a dual mentality, a dual uh, mindset that we have. We know what God's word says, but then we have our own flesh or we have the world around us and we got to be able to say no we got to rise up and say no not today devil get behind me you're under my feet S stop in the name of jesus and 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 speak the word of god in our lives so here are some statements of faith to build your identity in jesus number one today i want to give you is say no i am a new person in jesus I, you know, honestly, I think there probably isn't a week that goes by in my life for now decades as I've been living as a Christian, as a real Jesus follower, that I don't say, oh, no, no, no. My life is new in you, Jesus. And I get this from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Listen to this. Anyone who belongs to Christ, Paul writes, has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Verse 18, all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself. He brought us back to himself. God is leading us back to himself. Man, that's my heart. My heart is to be new in Christ and his mercies are new every day. And so I need his mercies uh, every day. I need his new, fresh anointing, the presence of God in my life. So I'm reminding myself, oh no, I'm a new person in Jesus. And when, when depression comes or anger comes or laziness comes or just sickness comes or just brokenness or distractions or worry or doubt or fear. I said, no, I'm a new person in Christ. That's the old man. That's the dead man. That's the, the part that was crucified with Jesus. I'm new and I'm alive in Jesus. Can I get an amen? Come on. So say it, say it together. Say, I'm a new person in Jesus. All right. Number two, uh, these are, a, this is a statement of faith that helps me build my identity in Jesus. Number two today, I want to say, I am his masterpiece and I am changed. 
I am God's masterpiece. I am created in the image and likeness of God. That's what the word says in Genesis. But in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul says in the Amplified, verse 10, we, you and I, are his workmanship, his own master work, a work of art. One translation says, I am his masterpiece, uh, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and ready to be used for good works. Come on, that's the word of God right there. I am his masterpiece. I'm transformed. I re- I'm spiritual, spiritually renewed, and I'm ready for good works. I've been transformed. I've been changed. I'm his masterpiece. The Passion Translation says, we have become his poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny that he's given each of us, for we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Woo! I don't know about you, but that gets me excited. It, it, it motivates me. It stirs in me. Because I have moments where I feel in my own life, I'm like, man, I just, am I good enough? Did I, did I measure up? Is, is this all there is? Why did I make another mistake? How did I get back to this same place? Whatever that is in your life, doesn't that sound like you sometimes? You got to remember in those moments to say, oh no, I'm a, I'm a masterpiece. God did not make an accident when he made me. No, I'm, I'm changed. I'm, I'm, I'm like poetry. I am a creative work of art. I am his workmanship made with his own hands. That's what Paul says. It's all because of the grace of God. But, but no, make no mistake. You are not a mistake. God made you and you are special to him. So, so remember, you're renewed. You, the old man is gone. And remember, you're a masterpiece. Number three, I am holy and without blame. I'm holy. Now, holy means I'm sacred. Holy means I'm separated and set apart. Holy means I am not f- fleshly. I am not of this world. And yet you go, wait a minute, but I am a flesh. I am of this world. Well, when God sees us, when we're reborn, when we are born again, when we've said, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Now God sees us as holy and set apart and without blame. Look what Paul said to the church in Ephesus chapter one and verse four. He said, God loved us. Maybe somebody needs to hear God loves you. God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God chose you to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Just let that sink in for a second. God chose you. And he he said, you're pure, you're righteous, you're holy, you're cleansed. Not because of anything you did, not because you said a certain amount of prayers, not because you gave enough money, not because you earned or read the Bible enough or prayed enough, just because you said yes to Jesus. Just because you said, I repent. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I'm not going to be perfect here on this earth, but I, I submit to you. Be the, be the boss of my life. Come into my life and be, be my Lord. Lord of all of my life. I surrender. I submit to you. When you do that, God says, okay, you're mine. You're mine. And now you are holy. You are holy. That's powerful. Wish I had more time just to talk on that. Number four. I'm complete in him. Now, this is an important one for a lot of people. Uh, Maybe write this one down. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Make sure you say this. I am complete in Christ. Colossians 2 verse 8. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking. The spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Remember what Christ says about you. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. And you are complete. Look at verse 10. You are complete through your union with Christ, who's the head over every ruler and authority. You are complete. You are enough. You're done. Your spiritual body life is complete. You are good enough. You are a masterpiece. You are whole and complete in Christ. Now, our flesh, our thinking, our behavior, it makes mistakes. And sometimes there's consequences to those mistakes. We miss the mark. We get lazy. We get distracted. We get 
depressed. We get lonely. We get broken. We get weak. We, we get uh, uh, aggressive with our mouth. We get angry. We, get, we have frustrations in our life. We, we just want to give up. All of those things could be considered sin on the outside, sin to our bodies. We're missing the mark of, of achieving all that God. Well, praise God, there's forgiveness. We confess our sins, we confess our faults, and we move on. But all the while, our righteousness in Christ is never in question. We are in right standing with God because you are complete in him. You need to say that. Say that right now. If you're watching, say, I am complete in him. All right, number five. Number five. It is no longer I who live, but I am alive in Jesus. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I say that all the time. I say, man, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Uh, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 says, My old self has been crucified with Christ, and it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Come on. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Say that. Let that be help. Let that be your, your real identity because your real identity is found in Jesus. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And number six today, I just want to give you one more. I'm victorious and the greater one lives in me. I'm victorious. I win. I'm an overcomer. I'm, I, victory is mine. I can do all things through Christ. Now look at this in 1 John chapter 4. But you belong to God, my dear children. You've already won a victory over those people. Because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Come on. The, the greater one lives in you. The greater one lives in you. The victorious one lives in you. That means you are victorious. Yeah, but I, I, I didn't get the job. Yeah, but you live in victory. Yeah, but, you know, my wife said this thing. My kids turned out this way. My money and my, my life and my success. Yeah, that's the natural thing. And that's going to keep growing and increasing. But remember, your real identity, really who you are, you are victorious. You are an, an overcomer. Greater is he who lives in you than he that's in the world. Hey, go back and listen to those six statements of faith and a scripture for each one and just write those statements of faith to help you build your identity in Christ. I believe this has been helpful time for you. I pray that it's an encouragement to you. Man, maybe you want to share it with somebody, send it, text it to somebody, post it, repost it on your social media, whatever it is. But come on, let's build your identity in Jesus. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Believe him for God's best. Bye-bye. 